Surprise, we're pregnant. I just wanna talk about our entire fertility journey thus far. Uh, my pants no longer fit, and you'll notice that I look pregnant now. Um, well, you are pregnant. Well, yes, but I, I didn't look pregnant for a very long time. Um, anyways, I just wanna continue on the conversation we've been having over the last year-ish. We announced last year that we had miscarried a handful of times. I just want to continue to destigmatize miscarriages. I want to talk about how everybody's journey is very different. Um, miscarrying the amount of times we miscarried in a row is definitely not the norm, but miscarriage is normal. I think it's like one in one in four. One in four preg known right. pregnancies. Yeah, so it could be higher because a lot of people miscarry without even knowing they're pregnant. Right. Okay, anyways, we're gonna go start to finish our whole journey. I hope this answers any questions and that this can be a resource for you or a friend or someone or anyone who's going through any sort of fertility hell. Cause also, I, we've like, been there. shed light on what the other side looks like. Cause really all you hear about are successful pregnancies, which is amazing. But that makes the non-successful ones that don't go to term a little lonely, you know? We started at the very beginning. She took notes. <laughs> okay, you guys should see my, med long three, my three medical years. records are this fat. They're so fat, I had to condense. Um, okay, so our first pregnancy, we found out we were pregnant in 2017. Three years ago. Three years, 2017. So we found out we were pregnant. Um, Gabby put the pregnancy test in the oven and asked me to look. Wait, I just like put it in the oven and pretend I broke the pizza stone. So when he got home from work. She's like, I think rubber melted on the pizza stone. Can you look at it? And I was like, <laughs> sure. And I opened it up and I'm looking at I it. I filmed it, I recorded it. And I didn't really see it until like 20 seconds after the fact. And, and I was like, oh. I think you blacked out. Yeah, it was a surprise. It was pretty funny, but that was our first time we ever found out we were pregnant three years ago. Okay, so we had the typical reaction to finding out you're pregnant for the first time. We were so excited, bouncing off the walls. We're like, this is so cool. We're gonna have a baby in whatever month. It's gonna be a summer baby, Whole just like changing. us. Um, and then the next day we went over to my parents' house. Let me preface that and say, my dad is a doctor. My, my, a lot of my family is in the medical field and my parents ha had two miscarriages between me and my sister. Um, and so we just wanted to keep them pre I, I, we all, I tell my parents everything medically because then if anything goes wrong, they know how to react. <laughs> they, they're very in the loop. We're very fortunate to have in the yeah. house medical doctors. <laughs> Yeah, um, so we go over to my parents' house, Thomas films the whole thing, and we tell my parents. I was expecting like a Woo reaction. Freak out moment. They're Just a little like, excited, but. They were, they were very cautiously optimistic, but they didn't scream, they didn't jump up and down. I think their first words were, let's get through the first trimester. Uh, they're like, let's get through the, how because many weeks Because that's when you? the majority of miscarriages Miscar happen. And they were like, how many weeks are you? And I was like, I think I'm like, five or something like i literally just found out they just were so level-headed about the whole thing when we left their house i was like oh like i guess this isn't smooth sailing because my mom had then talked to us about how she had miscarriages between me and anya yada 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 but that ties into the theme that all you see are the positive pregnancies and so you think it's smooth sailing when in reality like we said we're going to keep coming back to this number one in four like yeah happen to be miscarriages. Looking back in retrospect, that conversation with my parents was so incredibly helpful for Thomas and I because- Mentally. When we did miscarry, when the doctor was like, there's no heartbeat, we already knew that that was a possibility. So we went to the doctor. First time I went in, I was measuring about a week small. I went in a week later and she's like, no, not it's not sticking. Um, so we had, a DNC. Our first DNC. That was that. <laughs> that was a special time. Can I tell everybody? That was a yeah, please. So the first DNC, oh, they're man. like. It was one of my finer moments. They're like, you can either go to the hospital and go under anesthesia, or we can just do it in the hospital or in the office. And I was like, oh, I'll just do it in the office. I've never been under anesthesia before. I'm tough. So we go in. I let Thomas come into the room with me. I wanted to be the supportive husband and hold her hand through it all and like just be there for her and show her like, yes, it sucks you have to go through this. I'm gonna try and go through it as much as I can. 
I went through it as much as I could. So in the room, this is a lot of information for those of you watching. So just like consider Bear this a, a brief education on a DNC. If you do it in the, in the office, it's usually you, your doctor, your nurse, and your partner, if you want your partner to walk in with you. It is incredibly loud. And there are a lot of weird tools. Thomas fainted. <laughs> The nurse had to tend to Thomas while the doctor was walking me through the middle of my procedure. I was laying down on the ground next to drinking the, my water with my feet up, trying to get blood. Like I looked like I'd seen a ghost. Like Thomas has a history of fainting, though. Like and I was, I felt so bad because I'm like, no, don't worry about me. She's the one going through all the pain. I'm just. It was hard for you to see me in pain. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, miscarriage number one. We both left the doctor's office with a little apple juice and we both got like <laughs> got a goodie it. bag. Thomas was not invited to any DNCs after that. I sat those out after that. So that was the first miscarriage. We actually ended up having to have a second DNC for the first miscarriage because we didn't end up getting everything out. And so for the second one, I opted to go under. And Gabby gave us this gem coming out. Bec and this is when anesthesia Gabby came out. Thing. <laughs> Hungry? I'm starving. What do you want to get for dinner tonight? Don Antonio's. In and out. Mm, we'll have a quesadilla. Okay. Only if there's sushi. Sushi? Some sushi and quesadillas. Yeah. Sounds like a winning combo. I want a tortilla. Falls on guacamole. <laughs> How do you feel? No, but this feels like it has that good ice chips in it. Like the the beads from El Conquistador. Mm. You weren't there. Oh. You know, little ice cube beads? No, no, they're actually beads. Have you seen the ice machine that comes out as beads? I don't know, but if it should be eco-friendly. Are you guys having to switch to eco-friendly straws? Not yet. You'll get there. They're not paper, they're like recycled. They're recycled straws they're coming out with. A smile for a picture. Okay, so that was Sorry, the- just adjusting. The man can't sit on the floor. For, Most men can't. For the amount of working out you do, you're, you're very unflexible. It's um, only like three or four months, right? Our doctor told us not to get pregnant on the next cycle right away. She was like, wait a couple, wait a month or two, and you know, just give your body time to recover. And then like three or four months later, we got pregnant again. Same, same thing, I went in for my appointment and I was measuring small. I think that was the one time we heard a heartbeat. Yeah. And then we went quicker. in a week later and there was no heartbeat. Fast forward, second time into the hospital, third DNC, went in, and this is just, you know, like my regular OB at the time. Um, and she was like, it looks like you might have like a little bit of a heart shaped septum, but like, I don't think that's an issue. In, in your uterus. Oh uh, yes, my uterus had a little heart-shaped septum or like a dimple. If it was supposed to be like this at the top, mine went like this. And I believe that if it does this, then the blood flow in this area is not as great as uh, the other areas. And so if an egg implants there, like a fertilized egg implants there, there's not enough blood flow for it. Anyways, she had told us this. I was like, okay, let's just try one more time. All right, so then we got pregnant probably four months later again. I let myself recover for a couple months. We get pregnant, same thing, go in, uh, I'm measuring small miscarriage DNC. So Gabby had a DNC the day before her birthday. <laughs> yeah. And no. then we drove from Seattle to California on her birthday. So like she had a really good couple days. It was a really shitty birthday that year. And that was when we actually looped my parents in for the first time. I just want to give props to my parents because yeah. during all this, like, they definitely want grandchildren, but they never ask, when never. are you getting pregnant? When are you gonna get a grandkid for me? None of that. And so not having that pressure from your parents, like that's so nice. And yeah. so like, just thank you, mom and dad. It was very helpful because, and, and I'm guilty of this. Like I used to ask my friends all the time a couple years ago, when are you gonna have a baby? When are you gonna have a baby? When are you gonna have a baby? And I realize now how wildly inappropriate that was on my behalf. Because um, everybody goes at their own pace and you don't know what's happening behind right. the scenes. Which is why we shared this photo whenever that was last summer. Okay, so we get back to Los Angeles. I immediately start asking all of my friends. We're basically ready to go down the IVF road. Yes, we're like, let's do IVF. We've got money saved up. It's time. And Shout out to Bruce, mm -hmm. Gabby's dad, because 
And doing that, you gotta research your doctors, and there's just so much lingo and information. It's a that, different, IVF is a different language. And so Bruce actually sent us some amazing links and a couple different videos. Uh, videos as resources to watch, and we had to basically do our homework and watch these videos. And what was really cool is when we went into the consultation with our specialist, he, I was able to understand everything and follow along. Like we were so well versed in it and that just made the conversation so much more efficient with him. You knew what he was talking about and like it wasn't all this medical jargon going over your head. Correct. Um, so anyways, I asked all my friends for the doctors. There are two doctors in Los Angeles that I repeatedly recommended, one male, one female. Yeah. I, I think probably because my dad's a doctor, gravitate towards men and I feel like if they're a cool doctor then they, they kind of remind me of my dad's vibe so I feel very comfortable around them so we picked my doctor he's a fertility specialist and we started going to see him and he goes we had our first consultation we sit down and he explained to us how the process of getting pregnant goes through IVF through IVF at specific ages. So when you're 25, you have X number of great eggs and X number of bad eggs. At 30, you have a few, you few more bad eggs. And a at, few less great eggs. At 35, you know, it keeps, your eggs don't last forever, right? Anyways, we really jived with him and he was like, here's the deal. How did he show you the eggs though? In colored starbursts. Yeah, there were pink starbursts and there were yellow starbursts. Yeah. And, and as they, as you aged, the they weren't pink. The, they were orange and yellow because, yeah, yeah. because the patients eat the pink and the red ones yeah, yeah. when they go in. <laughs> and so he made it very visual and easy to follow, which was amazing. So he was like, here's the deal. We're not going to start IVF yet. Like we're, give me one year to dial you in and make sure we have everything covered. One of the, like, he basically has this roadmap of every obstacle that you need to clear and to create a perfect environment for IVF. Mm -hmm. And their main goal isn't to necessarily get you pregnant through IVF. Like if you can get pregnant naturally, like- They'd rather you do that and yeah. save the money. It, it, they're not, it made us feel really good that they weren't just trying to take our money and do IVF right away, right? Yep. So he's like, give us a year. And so in that year, there's a couple things. We did every blood test under the sun. You had your sperm tested. Like literally every test you could run, carrier testing, all that done, checked out, no issues. Great, so check mark one, one. check point one passed. I had um, an elevated thyroid and he wanted to even that out. So I got on thyroid medicine that I still take to this day. Check point two, passed. Right, uh, the third thing he wanted to do was fix the little heart-shaped septum dimple in my uterus. So, and there was some scar tissue in there from... There was some residual scar tissue from past DNCs or past pregnancies. You don't, there's no way to know. So I go in, have that procedure with him. You go under an Anastasia Gobby number 745 at this point, probably. You ready? <laughs> Got your cookie ready. How'd it go? I love my cookie. The cookie is the thing. Are you gonna eat it or are you just gonna hold it? I'm waiting for a photo. How is it? Perfect. Probably it feels like peanut it. butter in it. No, there are peanut butter chips in it. It's upsetting. Peanut M&M's. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. It's all peanut M&M's. I want to find a piece without peanuts. That's a peanut. Sucking the dough off? Is that a peanut? I don't like peanut M&M's. Try not to move this arm. I can't believe it had peanut M&M's in it. The dough was great. Peanut, no peanut. Nuts don't belong in cookies. Um, and he came back to the room after I had woken up and showed me what my uterus looked like before and what it looked like afterwards. And it is wild. Do you want to see it? Do we still have those photos? I'll show it to of you. Of course you save I'll them. show it to you. It's kind of nuts. This is it. Anyway, so he's like, your uterus is super clean. I'm gonna speed through this because there's still a lot to cover. Your uterus is super clean, no like sexual activity, no working out, nothing for seven to 10 days. You need to let yourself heal. Anyways, uh, we go in for a follow-up. He's like, you look great. You can try and get pregnant again. Um, we end up getting pregnant. Pretty quick. 
very quickly. At this point, seeing a specialist, you don't even wait to do one of the like pee st t stick tests because they want you to come in so quickly to get you on progesterone or anything if you need it. I don't produce enough progesterone personally, so I always had to take a supplement st when I, once I started seeing him. So anyways, we go in, I'm pregnant. It's too early to see anything on an ultrasound machine, but my numbers are elevated. He puts me on progesterone. I go in a couple days later, still pregnant. A couple days later, nothing. That's known as a chemical pregnancy. Okay, so whatever. We go back in. He looks at my uterus again after that chemical miscarriage or chemical pregnancy and says, there's still some scar, scar tissue in here. I want to do one more procedure. I said, okay, we'll do it awake this time. I don't need to go into the hospital and do the whole rigmarole with anesthesiology. So we go in, I do the procedure awake on drugs. Again, not the best look, but Thomas is there to take care of me. Um, and then- Is that when they put the balloon in? And then they put a balloon in my uterus that time. They hadn't put a balloon in the first time. And the reason for that is, I believe, so that this new, or the skin that was operated on. Yeah. Not the skin, but Everything the Everything that was cleared out, was it there's no way like if i rolled over or i did pilates or i moved there's no way it could collapse on each other in any way and like continue to make scar tissue the balloon holds it in place yep. and that way it gives you a better I mean, chance yeah, of not scarring yep. um, so the balloon comes out eventually they go in and they say you can try this next cycle i think i might have miscarried or had a chemical pregnancy one more time in there i'm uncertain honestly it all blurs together at this point that's why I took notes. Going in to check to make sure my uterus was clear. Yeah. And my doctor said, you have one huge follicle. You're gonna ovulate within the next 48 hours. Go home, have sex, try and get pregnant. If you don't, we're gonna clean out your uterus one more time before we like move on to like greater measures, Clomid, IVF, etc. So I go in a week later for my numbers and he's like, oh, your HCG is elevated, which is the pregnancy hormone. And I was that like, means you're pregnant. right. So I'm like, okay, cool. By this point, my hopes never get up. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Right. I'll bring cookies. Yeah. Um, pro tip. If you're going to the doctor, you should bring baked goods because they're very nice to you. And at this point you have to go in once a week. I was going in like twice a week. Yeah. So just I go to get in once checked. for my levels checked. Then they're I monitoring go. everything so closely. I'm on progesterone already, which is disgusting if you haven't done it it's not fun but it's a necessary thing for me um i go in a second time numbers are still elevated progesterone still low so continue to take your progesterone i go in for the third time they call me and your numbers are zero and i'm like okay pre chemical pregnancy been here done that no big deal and the nice thing i shouldn't say the nice thing but i guess one of the pros of a chemical pregnancy is there's no need for the a dnc dnc yeah correct because it's so early. Yep. Um, and so, so my doctor's like, okay. He calls me, checks on me, all the things. He goes, okay, call me when you get your period. We're going to put you on Clomid. And we're going to do a couple rounds of Clomid. If that doesn't work, we'll do IVF. Because it has now been a year at this point. Yep. And so I wait a week or two or whatever it was, and I and I never got my period. Okay. And I'm like, this is so weird. So I wake up one morning, I have 900 pregnancy tests in our bathroom because I just now buy them like they're candy off of Amazon. Um, and I take one and it's positive. And I think before I even walked in my room, back in our room to tell Thomas, I like picked up the phone and called my dad. And then I like hopped back into bed with Thomas. I'm like, dad, the test says positive. <laughs> My dad goes, hold please. And like gets on his computer and like looks up a couple of medical things. And he's like, there's no way your HCG can be zero. And you have a positive, pregnancy, you have a positive test. pregnancy test. And so I hang up with my dad. He's like, go in the doctor. Something's definitely wrong. And so, so I call my favorite nurse who's been with me through the whole last year. And I'm like, Allie, uh, I just got a positive pregnancy test. She's like, that's not possible. And I was like, I'm aware, <laughs> what happened? And she's like, well, something's wrong, girl. Like get in here. And so I like hop in the car. I that morning. Go, yeah, I go, I mean, this, these, these guys are the best. I'm obsessed with them. Um, I go in there and if you get in before 10 a.m., you get your results back same day. So I'm like speeding in to get there before 10 a.m. Cause they take your blood test. They send it out to a lab. And then the results from the lab come back that day. But the lab only picks up, I believe, once a day 10 at 10 a.m. So 
Turns out the lab mixed up my results. So, which honestly is no big deal. Like the amount of testing I've had, I don't care at this yeah. point. I had the only, the only thing that was a little scary was I had stopped taking my progesterone suppositories at that time. Only for a couple days though. Yeah, a week and a half. But um, I went back on them immediately and my nurse called me back and she's like, girl, we're pregnant. And I was like, what? But and still I, too early to get excited. Yeah, no, we don't get excited anymore. Not, mm -hmm. not then. So anyways, we were like, all right, well, if this is going to be the one, of course, <laughs> it's going to have that story. Yeah, like if there's any story to tell how I found out I'm pregnant, it's for sure getting a, like the wrong test. I don't know if they mixed up my test or if it, I don't know what happened. Once you get to 10 weeks, you graduate. I was offended and was like, you're kicking me out. Like I'm, I, be like the I, am I love the weekly appointments. I like people taking my blood pressure and my blood and showing me something on an ultrasound. Like I was very upset when they were like, okay, you have to go to an OB. So I do a lot of research. I call all my friends that I really trust here in LA. I get their OBs and I pick out an incredible OB who I jived with immediately. He came highly recommended and he's also a good friend with one of my mentors. So I felt like I was in good hands. And what? doesn't he remind you a lot of your dad? Yeah. Like his bedside manner and just overall personality, which is yeah, great. It's helpful for me. Also because I can't, Thomas can't come to any appointments. I've, I've, I've never met him. No, he's never Crazy. met the doctor. COVID. Won't meet him until the end uh, delivery if we make it that far. So, um, anyways, we love him very much. So at that point, we start going to see my new doctor. By we, I mean Thomas drives me to every appointment, sits very patiently in the car while I go up with my mask, have the appointment, I FaceTime him if needed, and then we go back and we discuss everything and call my parents and drive home. <laughs> so one would think that after we made it, after we graduated the specialist, like, everything just is like relaxed and easy going and mm. we have the traditional pregnancy that everyone else has and we feel the same and the excitement but from being in it so i think what you're trying to case. get at yeah. is uh we told almost no one like up until this week nobody knew so like when i hit 12 weeks um we which is when a lot of people tell 12, 12 weeks is the end of the first trimester that's normally when people announce we didn't tell almost anybody um i quite honestly struggle talking about it with most people. I don't want to talk about it unless it's on my term. I don't know if that's good or bad, but like I know that so much can still go wrong. Like it's not, like I said earlier, like it's not smooth sailing. I know plenty of people who have had complications further on in their pregnancies, which is why I choose to protect myself the way I do. But at that same point, I wanted to share it with you guys. I wanted to share our whole journey because I think it's important to talk about it. And we are very excited. We're cautiously optimistic. And I think the biggest thing is that we wanted to share is like everybody's journey is different. Mm -hmm. the va Even though the vast majority of stuff that you hear is all about these success stories, which is amazing. Like really that's amazing and it should be celebrated. There's just so many different journeys and different situations that people are going through so it can't be compared apples to apples No, know? and I'm actually totally cool with where how yeah, how many like I feel like if this is gonna happen to any of my friends I'm happy it happened to me. Yeah, because I feel like I have the ability to share that with a lot of people And We've had the resources like how many people's parents are doctors. The, yeah. Yeah, we've I'm very we're very fortunate um, but anyways you it, won't see me in uh, jean shorts anymore because they don't fit. Um, Hopefully this shed some light if you're going through anything. Yeah. Makes it a little easier for you. You're not alone. That's the biggest thing that we, not alone. we've realized throughout all this is it happens it's way more. It's so common and so many people don't talk about it. And there's so many things that you can do. One thing I want to say, I remember back on an Insta stories Q and A someone asked me how I managed to put on a happy face every day going through all these miscarriages and I think what I said still stands true and it's worth repeating there are so many other like yes there's a lot of shit going on in the world but I am very grateful for my relationship with my husband my relationship with my friends my incredible family like there is a lot of other small 
things that really can fill me up. Um, and that's, I think, how we handled yeah. the disappointment from every mis miscarriage, uh, how we did. Anyways, my clothes don't fit. So next time you see me on Insta Live, I might just be rocking a one piece. <laughs>